Hey everyone, it's Friday, 2 o'clock, and it's time for a live video here. Dragonfly Art Studio, Pat Gallette here. Um, I just want to say a few things about what I've been thinking about this last week. How you can make a really strong work of art just about every time. If you stick to some of the basics, like first of all, you really need to, I think, start with knowing skills, getting techniques under your belt. You know, you really have to, if anything attracts your eye, anything gets you curious, if you'd like to know how to draw what you see, or if you would like to be able to paint intuitively, or you'd like to be able to um, paint anything that in your imagination, you know, that happens. Um, you need skills. You need to know what a lot of different media can do. And, um, and that's, that's what we do over at Dragonfly Art and Mentorship Program. You know, every week you get a new thing to do. So that builds up a practice. You get to experiment with a lot of different media. You know, you have your mark that you make that is unique to you and you'll find that you'll keep doing this like probably all your life you know and different marks give you different results and mixed media is wonderful I go by whatever I know how all different media work so I can draw upon it to try to create what my thoughts are my dreams my imagination and all this kind of thing um, so it's, um, I, I think you begin with learning techniques, learning tools, practicing these things, practicing in different ways. You know, there's all different ways to do things. There are fun, loose ways, loosening up your style, things like this. Um, the second thing you really, I feel, you really, really have to be into is your subject matter must be something that matters to you something in your life that you love you know it could be little creatures it could be imaginary things it could be landscapes i mean i am so into like water and skies i've always loved big skies but now it's all the blues and the turquoises and the the water you know i think at this time in our life, you know, I need, that balances me and it gives me, I'm calm when I do it and, um, and I love it. And you, just subject matter is what you love. You have to know yourself. Find what you love. Don't negate anything, you know. If you love to make up anything, you know, your own landscapes, that's fine because subject matter is personal. It's all up to you. It has to be meaningful to you. You know, it has to uh, ignite your passion. It has to spark your curiosity. You know, you never get tired of it. You love it. You immerse yourself in it. That's big. That's what art is all about. You find your thing. Okay. But then I'm thinking there's a third thing, and you really need good people around you who encourage you, who support you, um, because I'll tell you, there's a lot of negative people out there. There's a lot of tox to toxicity, shall we say, and you have to walk away from that. I don't care who they are, you know, if they're not a hundred percent supportive of you and your art, you have to walk away because all of those, everything that comes your way has an energy and it can raise you up. It can knock you down. So you keep looking for those people who raise you up, okay? And, and I think that's the third thing. If you have those three things in place, your art will soar. Your art will be like the happiest thing you've ever done, and it'll be fun. And that's the goal of, you know, over at my awgroup.net. That's the goal there. Art and mentorship, doing what you love, doing what's fun, having a creative life, that takes you away, a little escape away from the world out there. Okay. So with that in mind, I would like to do a painting today. And I'm thinking big skies, you know. I took some pictures of the moon last night and uh, 
pretty amazing. So I'm going to see, you know, it's going to be mainly big sky and then maybe some, maybe more water uh, done in a whole different way again or something. So, okay, let's get, let's see, let's get a little bit brighter. Let's get a bit closer. Let's see if we can do this in a way so you can see what I'm doing. And my head won't be in the way. And let's see, right about there. You know, I always have a lot of pictures around. Let's see, we've got the end over here. Let me move you back a little bit. Get you right in place so you can see what I'm doing and, and not my hairdo or something like that. Okay, so I have a canvas here. And I have some pictures of the moon that I took last night. Um, I mean, you know, it's we're gonna it's really gonna look full tomorrow, okay? Because uh, the actual full moon is like Sunday um, after midnight, you know. So Saturday night, that's the big time to check it out. Um, what I'd like to do is get a little bit. I have, um, I've marked off about a third, about five inches up. This is about 16, 12 by 16. And, and I want to set in some kind of a, you know, kind of a horizon line for myself. I've measured it out and put a little mark for myself so that I can, because uh, sometimes I get tilted. You know, that's real easy for me to do for some reason. And um, let's see. So something coming a little bit above the horizon line, just to kind of give me some guidance here. And then something coming right at it, kind of in here, so that it's mainly room for the big sky. And a little bit of a shoreline coming in. You know, if you go over to my Awe Group site, there's a new thing now. You can get my free guide to the eight strongest compositions and compositions that lead your eye through. Um, you know, you could take a composition and just do a painting and try a drawing about that. Um, so I put, a, I put together a guide to kind of give people an idea, a feel for things. And um, it has eight examples and explanations of basic compositions. So why don't you, you know, go over there and get that guide. And have some fun with it. Okay. Kind of back to my colors that I love and see where it ends up. The colors that have been intriguing me are, I saw a painting and I think, you know, you don't know, but I, I'm thinking there was like a very pale cerulean blue kind of down in here. And then it kind of went to lavender. And then there were the clouds, and there would be the moon. And then as it got you know, higher up, it got deeper and darker. And I'm kind of thinking ultramarine, possibly. Um, we'll start with that. We'll see how the colors go. Um, going to mix together a little ultramarine and, and a little bit of uh, Prussian. And... Uh, I always like to give it a little spray, and we'll see what we end up with. I love, I love the Prussian. And then there's a blue you get with a Prussian and kind of a warm white. 
which just is fantastic. You know, I just love that. So we'll try a little bit more ultramarine in through here. Some straight ultramarine. And then a bit more with the Prussian. I like to mix my colors together. You know, like if I mix ultramarine and the Prussian with my other colors as I work my way through, you know, it creates a harmony of color. And that's real nice. I like that, you know. So, let's get a bit of this warm white coming in through here. I'm a lefty, I do better if I stick to just my lefty. I want some of this to show through the clouds. See these clouds, the sky, this, this whole sky thing going on here with clouds all around it. It's really cool where the moon appeared. And we get a little more depth in through here. Things happening, things happening all the time to kind of catch your eye and make it interesting. And you can make a blue deeper by adding a bit of brown to it, like a burnt umber, burnt sienna, colors like that. Blending. Which brushes? I'll try. We have a lot of lavender skies out here. Not sure why, but it's pretty cool. And each brush, you know, gives you different, you hold it a different way. It gives different strokes. It gives different appearances. Things happening. A little lavender and some of this deeper and you get kind of a wonderful kind of a gray going on Get this lavender in. And my paints are Galleria. I'm still using some of the last of the Reeves. They've gone out of business. I really like them a lot. Sorry to see them go. Now I think I want to see what I could do with that. Um, I'm going to add white to cerulean blue and see if that's what I'm looking for. It may not be. I'm 
Maybe uh, it's, it's ultramarine with a white. It's a very kind of a pale, icy blue. Sometimes things just get too saturated with the blue. You have to add a lot more white. See what we end up with there. Cerulean is an interesting color. It's um it's not one that I've used a lot in the past. white you know the strokes you make make it all look more interesting A wide brush for a blending brush. There definitely were these. Clouds. Well, that's kind of an interesting sky. Kind of going down to that blue like that. Now, I have this rounded brush. It's really cool. Hope you're seeing all this. Yes. Okay. You know, and and again, you know, the marks I make are uh, it's my thing to do. Now, look at the clouds. I'm looking at the clouds. They're kind of, you know, there's this deepness and there's this clouds kind of coming kind of strangely in wisping everywhere around and the sky would show through you know, kind of let the brush do interesting things This one I kind of roll. You can kind of see that I kind of roll. And then the sky showing through looks so deep and and mysterious and kind of interesting and these puffs of little clouds. It's good to follow a picture, your own picture of something, you know. It it's uh it gives you a guideline. You know, you kind of put things together in your own imagination but yet you're using a picture of something 
that you know preferably that you took you know that's that's your own kind of a thing oh these clouds get very pale very pale coming up and they get kind of wispy you know you want to make things interesting for whoever's looking the viewer Make it interesting for yourself to, to learn and make and try and do. And that'll be interesting for whoever's looking at it, too. Ooh, there's a big kind of wispiness coming in. Kind of going a different direction with it, you know. Kind of brush it through. That's kind of interesting. Okay, that's kind of interesting. The, the moon is going to kind of like go right in there. Okay. Now, I want to carry this through, these same kinds of colors. I want some, let's see, I want some very, 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 very light coming in. We need to see kind of, it's good to see a line, kind of where the horizon line is. It's a good, gives you a good focal point, you know, something, something to look at and really catch your eye. Small brush. Carrying that eye across. See, this is what I love. You know, I kind of set a challenge for myself or something, and um, how would I do that? You know, it's like the painting I saw this, these colors used in was very kind of uh, um, tight. It was a tighter. It was fussier or something, you know, something going on there that, and I wanted to just kind of free it up and um, do it in my way. So, you know, when you see something, be inspired by it and then say, well, now, how would I do this? You know, how, how would I go about doing this? Because they've already done it their way. And even on a photograph, you know, a photographer created it their way. They set it up. And you've got to find your way. You've got to find your thing, your technique that you like. So let's see. Ooh, not too much. Let's get some of this. We'll move down into some of the cerulean, I think. We'll just kind of reverse the procedure here. We'll take some of the cerulean and let's go into some of the, let's see here. In. Kind of a lavender.
Got some verticals going in with the horizontals. I want to carry our eye through. Let color carry the eye through. And then let's get into the deep dark stuff down in through here. You know, it's hard to say what it would actually, well, this, I don't know that this place exists, you know, so it can be whatever you'd like it to be, you know. It can have some of this going on through it here, and you know, waves and things happening. They kind of go in a, a Y shape, you know? Um, white. I'll show you what I, what I mean. If you're lucky to live by water, I live in the forest. <laughs> But I'm drawn to the water, maybe that's why. And these waves go in like a like a Y shape. And they carry your eye. They're like up and down and waves happening. Reflections, lots of reflections happening. And I can't think of anything better to do in the world today than to do your art. I'd like to encourage you to find your thing, you know. Water. Water is a great, great thing. You can get involved in water and just making water and hills and beaches and coastline and all kinds of things. That really needs a smaller brush. That really needs a bit of a smaller brush. Kind of carry us through. And, you know, want a little bit of contrast here and there, like a, a swell or something. We can get to a beach in an hour. We can be in Rhode Island beaches in about an hour, 45. And they are gorgeous. If you've seen on my Facebook page, beaches. Got a lot of Rhode Island beaches. Just kind of get kind of crisscross things happening. And if you can find pictures, you know, of water, just look up water on Pinterest or Google it or anything like that. I really like that dark. Keep that dark. Keep it dark towards the bottom. And I also have a bit of a viridian green. I'm going to mix it a little bit with the the Prussian, and that kind of gives you a ooh, little bit too much, maybe. 
Let's kind of get a little bit of them coming over this way. Deep, deep, deep. Deep things, deep things happening. Catching our eye, waves rolling through, and they're Y shape, and they're kind of W shape, and um, Let's see what that land would be. We want the land. I'm gonna make it a bit of. Um, I want it to kind of have a, a heather look to it. So might be a, a little deeper. Maybe back here would be a, a deeper green. Flat. There are a lot of flats. Flat kind of pieces of land coming out. Mix in some of that. Deep. things happening. So it kind of looks like some hills and you know I come from Chicago and we'd go down to the dunes and there'd be all these different ship shaped shifting, shifting hills and all kinds of things happening. shifting things happening. And it make it look like things, you know, I don't know, might be some rough things happen, throw and growing over there on the sides. Color in, blended. Colors kind of going <clears throat> over each other. Might be some growth. You create depth. Overlapping things. And just, you know, I have a little Indian yellow over here. That'd be a bit radical. Make it a lighter little kind of green coming in towards the edge. And again, back to that. Let's make an edge that 
<clears throat> really looks like something's going on. And it comes out straight and then goes up from there. Growth, different little fuzzy tops of growth. We'd see more close up, more details kind of things. Wild things, wild things growing. A little bit of the green. Take a bit of the blue. Mixing in a bit of the lavender again gives us um, kind of a, a gray tone. It just kind of brings our eye off a bit. brush again. I'm going to get some straight. Things happening. Just a bit more of the rolling white. Carrying our eye into the shore. You know, it's um The more time you spend with the thing that you love to paint, the better you get, the more things you notice. Creating some distance, some depth. Getting a little bit more of that. A 
wave action happening a little bit. Softening up the edges. And um, you know, you get to that point where you think you want to take a step back, take a look at things. And uh, let's really blend. Carry our eye through. Okay, and you know, I, I stand, step back, take a picture, and that tells me a lot of what I think it might need. Going back to that little... That little brush. more just little highlights Time for the moon. If you've ever seen me do a moon before. Okay. Okay. I don't know. It still looks like just a little bit more something. Something. And really, 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 really lighten the green. I'd like to just carry that. So it gets very thin back there. line and then I think that's I keep saying I think that <laughs> might be it but uh, yeah that's kind of it's kind of leave it at that who knows I may still do a few more things but I'll just show you how I do the moon and for the moon I take, boy, let's see here, for the moon, here we go, I take, I have a real special brush, I love this brush, and for the moon, I like to, um, first of all, it wasn't real white, you know, it had this kind of a little faint little glow to it. But I do like to play around with a template. It's just about full. Okay. 
Okay. Just kind of play with that a little bit. And there's this haze around it, the clouds around it. Wash off that little brush again. That little brush is getting a lot of work here. And work into it a little bit. Okay. Almost full, not quite full. You can still see things happening in it. And I think we're going to leave it at that. I'm just going to take a little baby wipe, let a few things. Got some nice sparkles happening in the water there. And, um,. Okay, let's see, just a little pale. I like the blue showing through. Kind of like that. And uh, that wonderful pointed brush again. See, now with the moon, now with the moon in there, I really want to play up some of these edges. Fix up highlights and just kind of disappears disappears into the rest of the cloud. It makes that blue so different, you know, that shows through around it. Wispy. The clouds around it, wispy, would have this highlight. Anything close to it would have these little, like the uh, silver lining edge coming through. It was very mystical. It was very interesting to see it. So I played up the moon beautifully. Called attention to the moon. Okay. 
and I think that kind of that kind of captures it. Um, yeah, time to take a step away, take a picture, see what I think about it, and call it a day. So, thanks so much for being here and for my mystical moon painting. And there it is with my pictures and everything else going on around it. So thanks so much for being here. And um, I'll be back next Friday to do another painting for you. So if you have any thoughts or comments, just, you know, ask me anything. And uh, otherwise, I will see you again next Friday. Thank you. Bye for now.